Center Rogers TV, the Barry Colts lead 1-0 after two periods of play. And uh, please be joined right now with Doug Anderson on another segment of Game Notes. And Doug, obviously, we were talking a little bit about what's happening in the Ontario Hockey League and what turned out to be a nice little uh, article about Cody Hodgson kind of turned into a bit of a... I, I don't know the polite way to say it, but... Uh, Slime piece? Yeah, it, it, was, it, was, it was pretty damning in terms of uh, what was said. Steve Simmons writes an article that was supposed to be about Cody Hodgson, but pretty much slams the fans in the GTA about junior hockey and not coming out to support junior hockey. And uh, I mean, it, it wasn't a slag against the Brampton Battalion fans, no question about it. He just happened to be here in Brampton when he wrote the piece. And uh, personally, you and I, we, we talked about it a little bit. It, it's a bit of a hypocrisy. What do you think? Well, Mark, I think hypocrisy is a nice way to put that one. I think it's a load of crap, to be honest with you. Uh, I've read Steve Simmons' articles in the past, and I've enjoyed his articles in the past. This one is the same regurgitated stuff that we've seen that have been knocked around the OHL and knocked around the CHL for years to come. And I think every time I, I th see things written like this, and I'm going to use a quote, there were less than 1,000 people in the stands. Well, I'm sorry to say it was more than twice that. Now, uh, granted, it's not a full house, and granted, it's not Ottawa's 9,000, but if you're going to quote the attendance, at least stay in the arena until the attendance is announced, which Mr. Simmons did not do. And one of the other challenges I have is that exact article that he wrote, the same tone of that article, came out three days earlier on Sportsnet.ca from Mike Toth. Here's the difference I have in the two. Mr. Simmons has never been in the Brampton Center prior to that game. He has never been to a Brampton Battalion hockey game here in Brampton. Mike Toth in my opinion, has the uh, wherewithal to say that because I don't know of anybody who watches more junior hockey than Mike Toth. Now, do I agree with what either one of them said? In some points, yes, and in some points, no. But the things like uniform colors and lack of attendance, that kind of stuff, that's stuff that did need to be in that, in that article, and it's really just a way to build up readership, and it was just, in my opinion, a, a disgrace. Well, that's where the hypocrisy comes in. If, if you're going to write an article about that, Please, be a fan. Be a junior hockey fan. Don't show up to one game and criticize the fans of the GTA if that was your very first game to come into the Brampton Center and do a piece on Cody Hodgson and it turns out to be a slag piece against the GTA. And, and I, I don't know, I don't understand where it was coming from. That, I guess that was the, that's the point I'm making is where was it coming from? He, he used college football as an example. As the OHL is a feeder system. Yes, it is very much like college football. And yes, the hyperbole down in college football in the United States is so much more. You know, we, like I said to you before the game, there's three pages of articles on college football when you go down to the Orlando Sentinel. Yep. They had three pages of college football de or dedicated to college football. The Toronto Sun has maybe a quarter of a page dedicated to the Ontario Hockey League. And if you're going to say that, at least ante up and say that. Let's make it fair. Listen, if you want to, if you want, if you want to personally make junior hockey more viable, write about it. Let's bring in some hyperbole. Let's bring in some fans by doing that in your articles instead of slagging it. You know what, Mark? I couldn't agree with you more, and I think that was very well said. Because to be honest with you, the junior hockey writers, the guys that follow the, the OHL and the CHL in general, people like Sanaya Sapergi, people like Terry Koshin, Terry Koshin. people like Mike Gantner, um, again Koshin and Gantner from the Sun. Uh, these guys know what this game is, game in and game out. They know the people involved and it's not just another you know here's the CHL and I'm I, I'm so tired I'm so tired of hearing the same stuff over and over the only thing that was not in that article was another one of those Brampton Battalion are leaving the Brampton Center in 2000 whatever I mean that's the only thing that didn't end up the only the same regurgitated stuff I've just had enough of it to be honest with you oh certainly and, and I know that uh, we were pretty frustrated when we read the article and it was uh, it was uh, like I said it, it, it was a lagging article and certainly I don't think it was one that uh, should have been printed but you know what I mean uh, Steve Simmons had his own agenda and he went out and he certainly wrote the article and uh, certainly you know I you know I don't want to defend, defend the fans of the GTA but there is a, a big market for other it's it's a huge marketplace what? and there's a lot of options the NHL the NBA the CFL there, there are a lot of options so it's tough to get the buck and certainly it, it's it's tough for fans of, uh, of Brampton when they read that for the fans who do come out and support this team that would be tough to read well Mark I agree with you hundred percent and you know what one of the big challenges that I'm facing right now is what I'd really like to see is I would like to see some daily press not just for the Brampton Battalion, but daily press for the OHL on a full page in the Sun. I challenge the Sun, the Star, the National Post, the Globe and Mail. And don't just talk about the John Tavares trade, because those are the only big things happening in the junior hockey world. Well, fact is, 
and this is a big fact. It's happening right across the CHL. Let me, let me, let me stop you there, Doug. How much, pre how much press did the Thomas McCollum trade get? Absolutely none. And there is your point. And that's what I'm talking about. Hey, it, it, you know what? You're absolutely right. All they talked about was John Tavares. And why? Because he came back from the World Junior Hockey Championships. He's a projected number one overall. He had just won a gold medal. Really, he was the darling of the Canadian hockey team. And, of course, he gets traded right after the World Junior Hockey Championships. I would wonder if there was going to be that much press if the World Junior Hockey if they didn't win uh, gold at the World Junior Hockey Championships, how much hype would have been around that trade. I and really would have. And hence the reason, Mark, I like to read the articles by guys on, on Sportsnet.ca like Garrett Joyce, a tremendous junior hockey writer. Patrick King, Sportsnet.ca, writes a great article um, and and it's not just the .ca guys that are that are really the guys but again I've mentioned Sanaya Sapergian I mentioned all the other people that are write the articles on junior hockey and those are people that follow this day in and day out mm -hmm. and that's what I would rather hear their views on it yes. and if one of those people had that to say then you would take it with you know what maybe you're right and, yes. and I'm not saying Steve Simmons is wrong by any means what I'm saying is where does he come off saying that when he's never been to the Brampton Battalion game before once again it's hypocrisy at yeah. its best, Doug, and I, I, I said it, and I'm going to have to say it again. It really was. Thanks so much, Doug, and I uh, appreciate it. And we're going to. I know you and Scott are be talking about uh, the moves uh, the battalion made uh, coming up in the third period. Thanks so much, Doug Anderson. When we come back, we will have more here on the second intermission of OHL Prime Time. Thanks.